Hello Tech Pros, episode 243. If you have ideas or if you are maybe, you know, if you're getting ready to start entrepreneurship or you're starting an idea that you've been working on, the personal thing that's helped me a lot is has been to journal. Welcome to the podcast where we explore the opportunities, challenges, and anxieties that technical professionals and techpreneurs face when building their career, building their products, and building their business. This show is about the people behind technology and the mindsets and skill sets that they developed that led to their success. You can learn more about this podcast and our guests at hellotechpros.com and about overcoming social anxiety at anxietynerd.com. All right, let's get started. Hello, Tech Pros. This is Chad Bostic, and I'm excited to introduce our featured guest today, Hamilton Perkins. Happy Saturday, Hamilton. Happy Saturday, Chad. Thank you so much for having me on. You're welcome, man. Are you ready to hustle? You know, every day is a hustle, and I love it. I love every minute of it. Awesome. That's why you're an entrepreneur and here with us on Entrepreneurship Saturday. Exactly. There's no other way to do it. You know, this is the only this is the only option, you know? <laughs> That's right. Hamilton Perkins is the founder and president of Hamilton Perkins Collection, a certified B Corporation offering designer travel bags at an affordable price while holding the highest standards of social environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. So normally Hamilton, I gotta, I gotta be honest here. We we have never had a uh, a vendor on or an entrepreneur on that sells travel bags. And there may be some of my audience members are like, Whoa, "What is Chad doing?" Like, l- usually there's a lot of tech startups, software as a service, you know, email marketing, all this kind of stuff. So where are we going with this, and how is it going to help the audience? Well, Hamilton has a really cool product that I want to talk about, and specifically Hamilton. Your product is made from what kind of material? Our product is made from recycled plastic bottles and recycled billboard vinyl. So each bag is different. Each bag is unique. And to really tie into the tech audience, I mean, we're using a ton of tech-enabled software and services. And, you know, it's just one of these things that as an Internet business, you know, being direct-to-consumer you know, I'm on a daily basis. I mean, that's that's what I'm living is, you know, figuring out the, the automations and, you know, figuring out the social media and, and figuring out, you know, our own website and, you know, how to best sort of, uh, you know, connect with new customers and, you know, ex- existing customers. How do we how do we service them? Yeah, absolutely, man. That's what we're all here on on uh, Entrepreneurship Saturday to do, right, is we're all trying to figure out how to not just get our businesses launched and figure out the technology behind our products, but also how to find the customers and the right customers and the right products and match them up together. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Entrepreneurship is all about for me and follow my passions and my dreams. But what does entrepreneurship mean to you? To me, entrepreneurship starts with the customer. I think Entrepreneurship now is definitely more pronounced. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, when I was younger, I was selling stuff. I was making stuff. You know, I, I was always kind of ma- making fashion products. You know, you know, I, I sold shirts. I sold pants. I sold shoes. I made my own shirts. I made my own shoes, branded them, and sold them. And a lot of that stuff is funny. I, I still wear a lot of it today, but. Um, to me, it's 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 that, and then it's actually it's going out and making a relationship with a customer. But I think tying it into what's happening in 2016, um, I you know, it is really uh, I mean it is everywhere, and I think it is it's it's part of like lifestyle now. And you know, there's probably <clears throat> excuse me, there's probably some overlap in kind of like entrepreneurial uh you know ideas and and just like what people view as like culture but then also actual entrepreneurship so i I think that that that's starting to be a blended idea but to me entrepreneurship in in its purest form is you know it's serving someone it's, it's creating something that serves someone and it could be a product or a service but um there's value in the end I love that definition because I talk to so many people 
where, uh, and, and there's no right, wrong. There's no right, wrong and indifferent, right? We all have our different perspectives. And that's what I love about the show is I get so many different perspectives. Some of the perspectives I heard is it starts with the money, right? So it's like building, yes. building an economy based off of da, 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 da or building revenue and, and optimizing your stream and your supply chain and all this kind of stuff. But what I heard from you is really on the social impact side of there are people out there and they want cool stuff or they want, uh, you know, products that are going to not damage the environment or, or help the environment in the process of, um, you know, serving their need at the same time. And then, That's right. right, the money stuff is like also there, right? Not, not to minimize that. We're not trying to build things to go broke at the same time, right? We want to make our money. But it's also what I hear from you is there's other impacts, right? There's other passions to go into entrepreneurship and I'd love it, right? I think all of all of those answers are the right answers for the right individuals and uh, you got a really interesting story. So so you're a, a fashion, whatever, I don't know, <laughs> a fashion dude um, who's been crafting stuff for a long time. Um, but what drew you into this world of taking like recycled bottles and recycled billboard signs? How'd you come up with like that idea of that technology and those those um, raw materials and stitching them together to make bags? So, all right. So I'd have to go back to my values because no matter, even before I knew what entrepreneurship was or understood business, I think I've always been of the school of thought that I really want to use business as a force for good. And I want to mm -hmm. use it as something that does more than just a transaction, more than just the profit. And <clears throat> as I evolved, I mean, I sold leather goods. Let me tell you a little bit about this, Chad. I, I sold leather goods direct to consumer part time. I, I had a full time job. I was a corporate guy. I was working uh, at a bank. Uh, I was in banking for several years because I wanted to learn more about the economy. I had definitely worked in retail for a, a ton of years leading up to that. And I had mm -hmm. gotten a lot of experience, but you know, I hadn't really done like client services. I didn't know like how, how does business kind of get done at a financial, uh, you know, in the, in the financial world. And right. I, I got a chance to see a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, and I, I got my MBA about three years into this job. And, you know, I, I was all geared up. I had a ton of like homework that I had to do. I had, uh, you know, sort of like pre-work for these kind of consulting cases that we were working on. And I, I basically came up with a concept right around that time because I was so interested in being really thoughtful about what I was going to carry around with me as I was like starting to actually travel more because we had like these global immersions where we were going to go to China, uh, we were going to go uh, to Europe and I just wanted to have a bag that was very thoughtfully made uh, that there really was a, you know, the story was like more than sort of the design story, but it was kind of the environmental and social impact story. And I, simply couldn't find it. So I made it for myself. You know, my, my background is, you know, very, uh, you know, do it yourself. I mean, I've made lots of right. different products up to that point. And I'd also had a nice customer base of, you know, clients that basically like understood like, you know, the custom world to some degree. I mean, I had done about 50% of my business at that point on the leather goods side it was it was all custom work, like personalized stuff. So like, if you wanted something like I could put your 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 actual podcast name on your bag, or I could make it like really, you know, personalized for for you. And I was just trying to repeat that process, but in a sustainable way. And that's the that's the billboard element of the of the product. The recycled billboards would give each bag a different, um, you know, just just a different approach just something different you know each one would be different but it would be worth talking about each time and that would continue to tell the story the recycled plastic bottles <clears throat> as i did research because i was still in school i mean i i started i saw that i mean there were billions of plastic bottles being thrown away mm -hmm. in a year in one country the u.s and i'm i'm just you know my mind is just 
I'm trying to wrap my mind around like the scale of like waste and the scale of right. like just people not having access to clean drinking water in, around the world. I mean, twice the U.S. population doesn't have access to clean drinking water, and like just seeing you know multiple different things. I mean, it's hard to really put a finger on exactly what is truly going to make like move the needle. But what what I was basically to the conclusion of was if you can take sort of the biggest problems that you can find and and you start there you have the biggest impact there as well and you can also help everybody in that capacity so you know i just research i mean i did the old fashioned way i mean i used a lot of google search when i got started <laughs> you know i tried to find the best partners you know find out who the players are who are the leaders kind of in the space and you know, it was all of those combined things that, you know, led to this product called the Earth Bag, the bag that's made from recycled plastic bottles. Uh, it diverts about 16 plastic bottles for every bag that we sell. It is better on the environment when it comes to water, when it comes to carbon emissions from transportation. And there are direct revenue impacts that um, we basically have in the developing world. So um, Haiti is the pilot country for these bottles. And it's been, you know, we're, we're still in the process of, you know, actually doing it now. So it's, it's something that's been, you know, really challenging, super challenging, but at the same time, it's doing, you know, uh, it's really changing a lot of lives. And that's, that's really what um, gets me motivated and go, that dives into the inspiration of it all. Man, that's so awesome. We could use this same podcast. I could copy and paste this whole thing and put it on to a Motivation Monday episode because <laughs> it's, it's just a lot of a lot of good feels on this show, man. A lot of cool stuff that's going on here. So um, what's the process like on the manufacturing side, right? When you were looking out for like different vendors, different partners, right, to how to build this thing, are you... Are you working with people that already have this material and it's like a waste product and they're trying to get rid of it? Or are you specifically like going out and hunting for like bunches of bottles and raking them together? Like how does that work on the manufacturing side? So it's definitely a mixed bag, uh, literally. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> you're right. No, no pun intended. <laughs> I, I, I've got fabric partners. Thread International is a, is a partner. And, you know, they are a tremendous leader in this space. So they've been able to secure a ton of kind of, you know, operation excellence to be able to source bottles in countries and to bring them here in a format that, you know, I can actually cut and sew and make a finished good from. Um, I also accompany that with sort of our own localized effort for sourcing recycled billboards from landfills here in the U.S. So you've got, you know, work that's happening in the developing world and you've got work that's happening here in the U.S. And it comes together, you know, in the form of a bag that we sell direct to consumer. And what we did was we pre-sold, uh, you know, a crowdfunding campaign basically to launch the product because it had this sort of built-in virality, you know, kind of tapping into what, you know, tech is offering as far as, you know, being able to uh, get a lot of people, you know, interested in what we're doing and, you know, at the same time really allowing us to organize how we communicate with them. And so the evolution of that is now, you know, actually having, um, you know, a bigger operation. So, you know, I, I really was doing a lot of my work in New York, a lot of my operational work in New York um, with my leather goods you know, I was doing this, uh, actually started doing it in Portland, Portland, Oregon. And, you know, now I've actually sort of, you know, been migrating a lot of that as well to Haiti, <clears throat> which, excuse me, um, sorry for my throat, but um, Haiti is where, you know, we are actually intending to start manufacturing the products, uh, you know, a good portion of the products to also increase our impact there. And, you know, at the same time, you know, we're, we're able to do the most good that way. So it, it, it the manufacturing, I've got infographics on it. Um, you know, there, it, it is a complex, uh, you know, sort of nut to crack. I mean, some, to some degree, um, you know, you can get, I mean, you can really just dive in on 
you know, just one piece of the supply chain for, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, an entire like white paper, or you can just really, (laughs) you know, create like a complex video on just, you know, simply sourcing bottles by itself or, you know, simply coming up with patterns. I mean, these things are, you know, bringing it all together is sort of, I think to me, that's like, that's the real magic of it because there's so many moving parts, you know, there's so many people involved, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, that's how, that's how we're able to make a difference is by, you know, putting together in an industry where, uh, you know, things have been done the same way for, you know, hundreds of years. Um, you know, there, there hasn't necessarily been the most innovation, uh, you know, on on the bag itself. Um, and, you know, this can kind of really date back far to, you know, basically like the first purse, you know, and I think now with technology, the, the ability to communicate easily and quickly and, you know, the speed, the, um, you know, just to, just to be able to be connected uh, with so many people that are all on the same accord. I mean, those are the things that allow us to basically do what we do with the manufacturing. Gotcha, man. So it's so huge, just like any other industry, the supply chain, the manufacturing, all there's so many pieces and partners and people involved in just each individual bag. Let's dive into um, like when you get the material, right? So when it comes from all the other vendors, all the other people who are helping kind of pull parts together, and now it comes to you as this material that you can actually sew together like I'm trying to picture it in my head, like especially on the billboard side, um, is it where there, there's different colors and different textures? You know, what what are the raw materials that you're working with, and then what are you doing? Is there like a dyeing process or or some type of uh, you know coloration that you're putting on it, or is it just kind of like, hey, this is the, the the raw look and feel, and each one's kind of organic and different based off of what it looked like on the billboard? Yeah, definitely. On the billboard side, I'll, I'll start there. Those are, you know, those are in the outdoors. So when when we get them, they're requiring soap, they're requiring water, and they are unique. So if you picture a billboard that you would see on a highway that has already kind of lived its life and it's headed for a landfill, it will be brought down and it can be cut into a pattern you know it it literally can become a lining to our bag which is a canvas bag the canvas is an 11 ounce canvas it's made from recycled plastic bottles 100 percent so it it gives it a great shape it gives it a great form when it comes to color the fabric we use has a basically endless possibility to dye it uh, through Pantone colors. So, you know, if you want to have a red or, I mean, there, there's just so many different shades of red, I mean, that you could potentially use, you know, so as a newer company and just starting out, you know, we, we're definitely on trying to get our email list to basically help us kind of come up with, you know, what do they want? You know, when I first got the idea, I, I really, I got out and spoke to people You know, I did a very different, I took a a different approach to design that, you know, normally companies sort of take this design process and they, uh, they bring it very close to the center and they, you know, basically design something and then they present it to customers. But, you know, the idea would be if we could bring customers in, let them really have as much, you know, feedback and input into what we will design since it's for them, then that would be a more transparent process and it would actually make a better product if actually more hands could basically touch the idea and more ideas could be kind of seen and heard. So, you know, these were all things that, you know, we've done in a unique way. You know, there may be other companies that might use billboards as actual outside, um, you know, textiles that they use for the outside of the bag maybe you know we chose to use ours on the inside you know we really hadn't come across many companies doing that you know definitely hadn't come across many companies that were combining both uh a recycled canvas with a uh with a billboard lining and you know these are just two big problems that you know we felt like 
we would have the best chance, you know, as being passionate about it, that we could actually make a difference there. Yeah, it sounds it sounds really cool, man. You just you never know. Like if if I'm, I'm thinking as a consumer, right? I'm going out. I'm checking out these bags. I'm opening up one, and boom, there's like Coca Cola labels inside. You know, it's like, hey, exactly. That's that's kind of cool. What's this one? It's the Barbell Man. Awesome. Hey, what kind of bag did you get? And and uh, just kind of showing them off with your uh, your your friends and family stuff like that. It sounds pretty. cool. And literally the discovery. You know, it's you know, it's almost like. I mean, the economy is now the sharing economy, you know, mm-hmm. like I I got an Uber to go where I was going just now. You know, I, I didn't know what car it was going to be, but the utility was there, you know, and right. it was still a great experience. And I mean, that that really goes back to the entrepreneurship equation is, you know, and, and that might be some somewhat theoretical, but, you know, it's it's starting to become more and more true. But you know, it's like your your skill set as an individual, your skill set, how that overlaps with, you know, actually what's happening today and maybe what's going to be happening. And then kind of, you know, tying those in, you know, because there's there, there's like a certain amount of timing and, and luck involved. So, um, you know, you still have to put in the work, the hard work and, the you know, there's a certain amount of talent that you've got to, you know, have to pull it off and to achieve certain things. But you know, that's definitely something that I think, like, I don't know, like, in the back of my mind or, like, just noticing that, you know, I mean, we don't have to own a, a place necessarily to, you know, discover a great place. You know, you don't have to own a car to, you know, discover, a, a, you know, basically getting to your next destination. I mean, I think the day of, like, having the exact same bag of the next person on an airplane or in school, I mean, those days are, you know, in my opinion, are somewhat numbered. You know, I think now that we've got, you know, much more capability on the design side, on the technology side, you know, there's no reason for, you know, a customer to really be, you know, treated special, you know, with a special care and really have something that's personal to them. Dude, I love it. And and I got a challenge for you. Your next product to come out with is full-size luggage. And that way, when I'm in the airport... I don't have to tie like a silly little uh, bow around my handle that's uh, made out of fabric that looks like soccer balls so that I can actually find <laughs> my black luggage because it looks like everybody else's luggage there. No, I want like made out of, uh, you know, Coca-Cola billboard signs. That would be amazing. And I would have a very unique product that nobody else would have my particular bag. Well, I know you're busy with your work, but we might need to get get you on our side and give us some uh, give us some of your design uh, <laughs> <All right>. inspiration. <laughs> hey, that'll be a first for me. I've never designed anything other than software before, so uh, yeah, sure, count me in. Tell you what, <laughs> Hamilton. Right after the break, we'll come back and we'll talk about more of the geekier, nerdier stuff on the software side, the internet side, the direct to consumer. The how are you actually? finding these customers and and marketing your product out there. But first, we'll take a quick break and thank our sponsors. This episode of Hello Tech Pros is sponsored by you, the audience. Instead of looking for new corporate sponsors, I've decided to adopt a pay-per-value model. What that means is you decide on how much I get paid. If you're just browsing and have yet to get value out of the show, don't feel obligated to pay a darn thing. However, if this podcast does its intended job of helping you build your career build your products, or build your business, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. Pick the level of recurring donation that matches the level of value you get out of this show, or make a one-time sponsorship for that big aha moment that have helped turn things around for you. Become a sponsor today at patreon.com slash hellotechpros, or visit hellotechpros.com slash sponsor. Okay, we're back with Hamilton Perkins. Hamilton is the founder and president of Hamilton Perkins Collection, a certified corporation, B Corporation, that builds designer travel bags at an affordable price. And what we're talking about here specifically is the Earth Bag, a bag that that is made out of like 16 different plastic bottles where we're saving carbon emissions. We're recycling here. We've got a really amazing story about these bags and not just plastic bottles, but also billboards. And I got a challenge for, uh, I got a challenge for Hamilton to build me like a full size suitcase out of these billboards because I want to, I want to use Coca-Cola billboard 
suitcase. It sounds pretty awesome. So Hamilton, <laughs> um, at the very beginning of the show, we kind of mentioned like all of the internet-y kind of stuff that goes into your business, right? It's not just about the manufacturing side, but it's about um, getting in front of customers and spreading the good word about your product and all of the, just the e-commerce side of it. So what is maybe um, one of the biggest challenges that you've had in in the the building and getting this stuff out there to the consumers? What's on that side of it have you struggled with? I think the biggest challenge is probably, it's the pre-launch. I mean, you know, I'm so focused on action and doing and executing and operations that I think for me, it's, it's tough to be told, you know, well, these are the lead times for this, you know, particular, uh, you know, part of the product or, you know, even the delivery. I mean, things that maybe go overlooked or maybe I just overlook. I'm still somewhat of an outsider. Um, you know, rewind a little bit about me. I mean, I I was in the retail circuit or in the industry, you know, before my corporate career, kind of like basically in my, my teenage years and kind of before college. I mean, I, I worked at all the different, uh, you know, kind of places that you might work at if you were, you know, trying to get exposure to fashion and uh, Virginia, which isn't really known for fashion. So they left a big, um, I guess you could say there's a lot of room for imagination. Um, you know, cause I worked in boutiques, I worked in big box chains. I worked, um, you know, on consulting projects, you know, I worked independently as a consultant for myself in Washington, DC. I went to trade shows, I traveled and, you know, all of those experiences, you know, they kind of tie together. So they don't necessarily, you know, mean that doesn't mean that I necessarily have, you know, walked a factory and beyond walking the factory, actually like spending like, you know, whether it's billable hours or trying to actually make something or like, you know, running my own factory, which, you know, mm-hmm. though that's kind of a different skill set than the like sales and marketing side, although you still have to think about that um you know as a just as a general manager or a business owner um but i think the biggest challenge for me you know just you know patience i mean that's probably you know I, I think i'm a pretty patient person i mean i think if i were to survey someone anyone kind of close to me they probably would say the opposite well you could probably <laughs> you know probably tell me hey you've got a lot of patience but you know it's hard i have to work hard on really being patient because i really want to see things and i know you know, I know where my ideas are, or, you know, I know kind of like what the problem is I want to solve, but, you know, sometimes it just takes, you know, time and, and, you know, just patience. Yeah, I feel you. We want things, (laughs) we want this, we want everything at the speed of Uber, right? Just click a button and it's there. And the consumers want that. And we want that as makers. Um, But sometimes you just got to be patient. And sometimes you got to just wait on the right thing to happen at the right time. Um, everything worth doing is worth doing right. And if it's worth doing right, you got to let it percolate and simmer and bake and, and you know, all the parts come together. So I can see how that can be a tough one, especially, you know, I'm from the software world where um, slow is like six months, right? And that's like, God, the world has changed in six months from now. So slow may be like <laughs> six hours. Um but in the manufacturing world, I, especially when you're like dealing with parts coming in from overseas and and pulling all kinds of different materials and vendors together, it's got to be a nightmare. Um, let's talk about um, on the web side of things. So what are you doing with your website and your social media and all that kind of stuff to get the product in front of the customers? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it all really centers around word of mouth and that can be really, you know, that can be a very general way to think about it. So to go a little bit more narrow, I think social media is really the word of mouth, uh, you know, driver. And then from a, you know, almost from a, maybe a funnel perspective, I mean, the website that we own, our HamiltonPerkins.com, which is actually a Shopify website, 
you know, that is, you know, kind of like really like the hub for pretty much everything that we're doing. Um, you, you know, I, I think between Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat as social media apps, you know, I think that these are some of the most powerful today for what what our message is and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of the level of detail that we want to share with customers. Um, Facebook is really still a great place to re- really share a lot of information, um, you know, whether it's sharing links to recent articles or press or providing value and letting everyone know there's easy ways to save on basically living an eco-friendly lifestyle it's not only really save the planet it's save the planet and save you know your bank account as well um facebook is a really good place for that for us instagram on the other hand is a little bit less about the links the blogging it's a little bit more about the visual you know that's our lookbook you know that's that's kind of our our you know if we were to have a gallery like that's kind of like the kind of things that it might be in or um if we have something interesting that maybe comes in from a customer that's a good that's a good place for it to showcase um snapchat for us is really cool because you know on the maturity level it's it's you know it's much you know it's far less mature than facebook or instagram um, but, you know, doesn't lack any power, I would say. I mean, I think I read a stat, I read a stat about Snapchat being, I think, more active than Twitter on daily users or maybe daily activity that, you know, something along those lines, which, you know, kind of blew my mind a little bit. But what we end up using Snapchat for is a lot of the behind the scenes and the things that actually make us uh, uh, basically it makes the company, um, you know, a human to some degree. I mean, I think today that's really the thing that's driving, you know, a smaller, a nimble company like us, you know, the reason that we, we can sort of compete in an industry where, you know, one holding company basically owns 50% of the market share, you know, it's because, you know, we're, we're real. I mean, we're authentic. We actually, you know, we, we share our wins and losses, you know, um, if there's something that is on our mind, we can quickly, you know, talk to customers and, uh, you know, get their feedback, you know, adapt, change like really quickly. And, and, you know, speed is still, uh, something that, you know, all of these different, you know, ways that we get in front of people, you know, I think that that's something that helps us a lot. Um, but it, it, it's tied you know, all together to me, I think by the relationship and basically, basically the ability to, to have a a conversation, to start a conversation, to start uh, a process that, you know, just allows us to add value, um, you know, to new potential people, you know, every day. And, and I mean, that's pretty much, um, the the social media side of it i mean i'm also i'm really interested by you know linkedin medium uh i think that you know sites like that are still great because you know blogging and like long content form like it's still a good way to get the message out there you know it's not necessarily where people are looking for fashion companies but um you know, you, you never know. I mean, you're always discovering stuff. I mean, I'm reading, I read Medium at night because it's editorial, you know, like there's a lot of editorial picks there and I can find, you know, this very, you know, interesting product that maybe becomes a gift idea for me or something or, you know, um, LinkedIn as well. I mean, sometimes I'm just, you never know, like the articles people post, like mm-hmm. where that leads leads to. And a lot of times people will say, oh, well, I, f- I saw something that you posted on LinkedIn or something that you posted on Medium. And, you know, it all kind of ties together back to our site, you know, so I'll blog on, on our website, which is, you know, I basically just republished it, I guess you could say, um, last month. So, you know, now I'm, 
I'm just now sort of getting back into the rhythm, but, you know, just kind of blogging every day. I mean, you know, something, you know, that whatever's going on in our world, you know, having it available so that, you know, potentially maybe someone discovers a piece of that content. And if it helps them, you know, we definitely want to be there to, you know, offer more value if we can be of more service. Um, and then eventually, of course, if someone's in the market for a bag or someone's in the market for, you know, maybe a newer product that we're offering, then, you know, we're, we're top of mind. We're, we're potentially, um, you know, considered now, you know, so you can consider us, you can go to Amazon, we know, or you can go locally to, you know, the, <clears throat> the store that you, you really trust and you like, but, you know, there's a company online like us that's, you know, basically on a daily basis, you know, trying to bring you value, trying to, you know, enter, you know, entertain you, keep you engaged, you know, educate you, show you, you know, things that, you know, are basically, you know, very relevant, hopefully. And, you know, that that's really that's kind of like, I guess, a just a quick overview kind of of like what we're doing to, you know, get in front of new, uh, you know, new customers, basically. Yeah, man, I love it because we're what we're doing here on on the social media stuff is really telling the story of the brand, right? Telling the story of the product, telling the story of the makers, and telling the story of the customers, and weaving all of that together into this tapestry of the 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 new way of marketing. And it's not selling; it's really just telling stories. And the more people hear these stories, there there's going to be a certain percentage of them that buy into it and go, "Dude, that's awesome! Like, I love." that story right i love the story that hamilton's telling here with his bags with his pictures with his traveling that everything's going on like that's the lifestyle not just like the travel and the bags and the look but also just like um the the social impacts the environmental in impacts like i love it all and i want to be part of it so when that person like has a decision of you know what i need to go out and get a new bag because mine's falling apart who are they going to think of they're going to think of Hamilton because they resonate with him. Will everyone? No, right? Are we trying to like um, necessarily replace uh, other big leading manufacturers? Not necessarily. We're trying to resonate with people who have the same kind of idea, the same kind of values as Hamilton that's does. That's right. And, yeah, and, that, and that's what I see you doing here is really sharing your core values and your core message of who you are and the kind of stuff that you appreciate and through social media, both on Instagram and Snapchat and, and all the other means, you're like sharing, hey, this is my story. This is the story of me as a maker. This is the story of the products. And this is the story of my values. And there's going to be uh, you know, people that are like, I got it. <laughs> Sign me up. I want to be part of it. Tell exactly. you what, Hamilton, bef um, if, if you want to share with our audience how they can get connected with you, with you <laughs> if I could speak, um, if they're really resonated with the story, First of all, share any final words of wisdom that you have for our audience about entrepreneurship and then the best way that we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. Yeah, I think, you know, and I don't know how much wisdom I have, but, <laughs> you know, I, I think if you have ideas or if you are maybe, you know, if you're getting ready to start entrepreneurship or you're starting a, an idea that you've been working on, the personal thing that it's helped me a lot is has been to journal. Um I, I think there, there's a lot of things that I see in one day, starting so early, staying up so late, and it can become really easy to lose sight of really what you did. I mean, I think we've all maybe can, you know, relate to that story of going somewhere, getting in a car, getting to the destination, and really not paying attention to how you got there. You don't really remember seeing much on the way there. If you journal and this is something that I do and I did this as a kid and now you know I basically I wasn't consistent but consistently now I do it it really helps me appreciate what have I done for the day um I, I do it in the morning and at night I, I'll start the day with it you know just things that I'm, I'm really just excited about for that day things that I need to accomplish so I'm kind of building my to-do list into it uh, general thoughts, like creative thoughts, things that maybe are well beyond my capability, <laughs> but you know, it's still on my mind and it really gives you, you know, it's like you're almost leaving yourself breadcrumbs to be able to go back and, you know, and even if it's not you, maybe it's your, you know, you leave it for your, 
you know, your kids or your grandkids or your family members or your friends or your customers, anyone, you know, it's, it's, I think there's, I think there's something that's interesting about that and even technology and how you can kind of include that in what you're, what you're doing. And then, you know, just to, to stay in touch with us. I mean, I think the best place to really catch up with us is probably going to be Instagram. So I would say, you know, follow us on Instagram. The username is at Hamilton Perkins and you you can always really get in touch with us there but you know we have a website as well it's hamiltonperkins.com so you can you know go to hamiltonperkins.com you're welcome to join our mailing list and we can keep you updated we promise to do the hard work we promise to basically uh, allow you to basically just take a look at what we're doing and just keep you updated on uh, new offers and uh, new products and then um, you know, if you really want to get personal, you know, I would say follow us on Snapchat. Snapchat is a great place for us. We show a lot of behind the scenes. Um, you know, we show a lot of the current up to, to the minute, um, you know, activity that's going on behind the brand, building the brand, um, you know, showing the impact, a lot of, a lot of quotes, a lot of stats, you know, if you want to know, you know, a little bit more detail about a collection of ours that basically, you know, it's saving about 300,000 gallons of water, um, in the process of being made, you know, that's where we're going to expand on thoughts about stuff like that. So, you know, uh, definitely look forward to hearing from anyone and, you know, thank you so much for this opportunity, Chad. Well, Hamilton, thank you so much for joining me on Hello Tech Pros today. I really value the fact that you're not just looking out for the dollar bill. You're looking out for all of these other impacts, the social impact, the environmental impact. And I appreciate you coming on the show to tell us your story today. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, you know, hopefully one day I can, you know, reciprocate and get you maybe on a podcast of mine. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Count me in. Absolutely. Tech Pros, Perfect. if you are launching whatever it is that you're launching, whether it's software, whether it's hardware, whether it's a bag or a book or a whatever, <clears throat> the biggest thing that I got out of this today, and, and maybe it will help you as well or, or think about this, is you know we hear the cliche all the time, think outside the box. Well, the box in many times is just your particular perspective on how things work right? And so whatever is kind of traditional and normal in your head may be revolutionary to someone else. So, and, and what is normal to them may be completely revolutionary to you. So my advice is just to get out and meet more people in the world, more diverse people in the world and listen to their stories and tell your own stories to them. And that will feed the fire of your inspiration that will and, you know, give you so much more direction and options in the world on product design, on customers, on marketing, on, you know, just everything possible. Because um, if you just do the same thing over and over and over, it, it's not going to change, right? So to get new inspiration, talk to new people and uh, see what they're doing. And maybe you can take some of that and move it into whatever you're working on. You've been listening to Hamilton Perkins, and I'm Chad Bostic. And until next time, take care. The show notes page for this episode can be found at hellotechpros.com slash 243. Do you use Slack for team communication? Join the Hello Tech Pros Slack channel at hellotechpros.com slash Slack. If this episode helped you out in any way, please leave a review on iTunes and let me know what you thought iTunes reviews helps our rankings, which helps us grow the Hello Tech Pros podcast to a broader audience, which helps more technical professionals and techpreneurs build their career, build their products, and build their businesses. If you are a subscriber and get repeat value out of this show, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon. The information on this podcast is free to everyone, but I'm giving you the opportunity to pay for the value you get out of it, starting as little as a dollar a month. Pledge your support today at patreon.com slash hellotechpros or visit hellotechpros.com slash sponsor.